Good. Okay, well, good morning to One Million Cups, everyone. Um, I see some new faces here. Is anyone new today? Okay, great. Well, in order for you, basically the concept, we call ourselves Guppy Tank. We're kind of like version. Um, we give six-minute presentations and then 20-minute Q&A. Um, I want to give a shout out to our co-organizers, Isabella, um, Angela, and Stephanie. They could not be here with us today. Um, I'm Jan Christian. Uh, I'm obviously here with you. And Randall from Torch Studios, uh, which is also one of our sponsors. Also Barney's for providing us the coffee for our mornings, uh, early mornings here. And Rollings for providing us this beautiful, great space that we have uh, to give our presentations. Um, let me see, I'm not missing anything, right? We can go ahead and... Exactly, to our volunteers, Chelsea, Maria, and Duverson. All right, thank you very much. Um, so without further ado, we will present Report 24-7. Here you go. Okay, do you have a... You will click, okay. Some of, them, uh, some of them are set for automatic, some will require you to click. Okay, good morning, I'm Steve Santrasola with Report 24-7. And let me go ahead there, well, almost there. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So what is Report 24-7? We're a suite of cloud-based software tools for business to manage organic positive video messaging to drive brand, image, and reputation. Next slide, please. And this is an example, whoops, this is a, an example of what we do. Enter. Okay, didn't play the video, but we, yep, it's supposed to play the video. And so you'll probably have to click on the video itself. You don't. But no sound. Okay, we'll, we'll live without it. Let's go to the next screen. But we produce organic video that's generated by your clients and your customers. Next slide, please. Okay, the idea for Report 24-7 came to me over the past couple years. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of educational and instructional information to business groups. And most of that content that I've instructed on has been the value of implementing video into your social media and onto your website and the great organic value for search that that does generate. Next. Also, during these events, I was able to talk to a lot of the business owners that were there. And one thing was coming through loud and clear. They were getting more and more frustrated over the negative content being put up on the internet, social media, uh, review sites, but yet they felt they didn't have a voice. They felt so restricted as to how they could combat that and how they could respond to that. Next slide, please. At the same point, Google, with its acquisition of YouTube, started to show a diminished focus on text in an increased focus on video. So at that particular moment, we knew that the delivery medium that we would choose for our platform would definitely be video because of its strength in organic search. Next. So I look at the internet as this big area and businesses have a void to fill. And there's two choices. You can either let random content from random people fill that void. Next. Or you can choose to put out positive content from individuals that you select and you can decide as a business where to share it. And that's where the strength of our platform comes in. Collecting a large volume of positive content that you have full control of from content creation to ultimate distribution on the internet. Next. The other thing that we had to look at was the challenge that we were presented with by the perception of what video uh, production means to companies. To a lot of individual companies, it meant a lot of money being thrown at a few seconds to a few minutes of video creation. Next, please. But for us, we've redefined what a video production team is, and it's anyone that has one of these right here. So a video production team means anyone that you know, customers, clients, anyone 
can now be a video creator for your company. Next. We offer two ways to collect video. The first and the most powerful way is in the moment. I like to use a couple of examples on this. Someone goes, they buy a new car, they've gone through the entire process, however long that took, but now they're at the point of getting that car taken delivery. That's the point when the salesman pulls our app out and asks for that video testimonial that takes about 30 seconds to collect from the customer. The other opportunity is uh, home service companies are, are big for us because they have a, you know, a fleet of trucks, numerous individuals on the road each and every day, the opportunity to collect uh, 10, 20 videos that they can work with. Next, please. The other way that we offer our clients to collect video is through sending out an invitation. On the management side of our platform, businesses can go there. They can issue either a group or an individual invitation. Next. That has a dedicated link that the customer would select that takes them to a dedicated video collection screen. There we go. And in under two minutes, remotely, whether it's next door or halfway around the world, that video can be created in either a review or testimonial format, and they can, add a, they can record, title, and save it in under two minutes. And it goes directly to the management page where it's privately held until the business has a chance to review it. Next. And so it looks something like this. And again, very organic, very natural. But again, video testimonials, reviews. We have a lot of companies looking at this for video infomercials also that they produce and push out to social media. Next. The management page looks like this. You have shares to social media that takes just a couple of clicks to, to share to each social media. We offer an API, an embed code, or a direct link for sharing onto your website. The API lets you set up automatic rotation of video on whatever frequency you want. A share link, a short URL, and the platform in its entirety takes less than 10, 15 minutes a day to manage completely. So it's not a monumental task on a daily basis. Next. We also have a product called the Power 57 that every single one of our subscribers gets. What is this? Every single video you share to your website plus your website is indexed on over 57 Google index directories. Most businesses, several, we get you indexed on over 57 Google index directories. Again, a huge benefit for organic search. Next. We have our apps out in iOS and Android, and they're available in both Spanish and English and they are purely a business tool that are used by our business subscribers. It's not something the public would download for public use. Next. A lot of times people say they like to compare us with YouTube. We're flattered, but similarities are not very uh, strong in that YouTube is more of a social element and we're a pure business tool. We offer white labeling to all our subscribers, the Power 57. We have no advertising, no competing videos from customers. We offer direct customer upload. So you send that invitation out, they send that back to you. You don't have to do anything except have it on your management page. You don't have to handle it multiple times to get it up to our platform. Next. So YouTube looks like this, very busy, distracting, a lot of things to take customers away from your message. Next. Ours, very clean, white labeled, all of your uh, social media links on that page. Again, the focus is you, the business. Next. We've also been accepted by San Diego-based uh, 22 Social as their sixth video repository. We've joined the ranks of YouTube, Google+, Wistia, and a couple of others, and we are now on their platform as their sixth video repository. Great affirmation for us and exposure to their over 40,000 customers. Next. We operate on Amazon Web Services for some obvious reasons, security, reliability, elasticity, especially important when it comes to um, video, and we have our development server, our pre-live server, and our live server uh, stationed with Amazon. Our revenue sources are twofold. We have two subscription levels, uh, six month duration for each, and we have multiple add-on services that we offer. Next. We sell to individual businesses like some of you in this group may be right now, and we also, but most of our growth comes through preferred service providers, digital agencies, marketing, social media, uh, anyone already involved with the digital management of a company with their image, 
and uh, more and more we're getting attracted by uh, traditional marketing agencies whose revenues are shrinking and they're using our platform as their first foray into the digital field and so they're finding it very easy to use. Next, and I think this is the last coming up. I'm Steve with Report 24-7 and I'm excited to have some questions. Yes, please. <laughs> Someone's got to go. Oh, I'm sorry. I know the face that Dawn had. See, they've missed me. It's between me and you. Yes, yellow is our signature color. I know. No. <laughs> so what's your exit strategy? Acquisition. Uh, ultimately, that is our exit strategy. We anticipate uh, to uh, grow this. It's been designed as a national and international platform. We are set up for multiple languages. Obvious reasons why Spanish is our first. Um, we have connections in South Florida. We have a virtual office down there. Um, and uh, just an ideal area for us to venture into. Uh, but we are set up for any language whatsoever uh, as far as our back end is concerned. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my particular uh, endeavor is in the game industry, which is heavily review driven. In fact, there are people out there like PewDiePie with nearly 40 million subscribers that you know, anxiously await the review of any video game that he does. Um, obviously, they can't, none of them are controlled, and there was recently a very big uh, row, row about uh, integrity in reviewing. So how would you serve to control that or be proactive about something along those lines where you have many, hopefully many, people reviewing your game and then just you know, saying whatever? Okay. Uh, one clarification I want to make first off is that we're not a review uh, platform where people would come and view our stuff as an unbiased. Okay, we are review testimonial that is strictly a business tool. Now with the power of 57, that does get pushed out to Yelp as one of those index directories. Um, but one of the key factors is that because we're not holding ourselves out to a, be an unbiased review site, the business, once a video gets loaded up onto our platform, they have every exercise decision that they want with that video. They can view it, don't want it, delete it. They can view it, want to share it, they can share it in whatever manner, how they want to share it. They have full control. This is more of a business tool uh, to, to give that business that volume of voice that they need out there in order to keep positive information flowing. So we're not necessarily a traditional review site. As a quick side note, we had a platform out last year um, which was a video review platform. It was uh, called Reviewdios and that particular platform we had out for six months, but we pulled it back in because our customer base was set telling us we are tired of the information that we have no way of answering. And so we want control over the content that we, where we want something that gives us control. And so that's what we pulled in, redesigned, and launched as Report 24-7. Uh, so we're not an unbiased, and so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. I am and I'm not. Um, I, I don't know if I have a direct answer. You know, we, we would, our customers would be the game companies, right, it's B2B. Our customers would be the game companies that want to collect and really push out all the positive they can. Now I do, one of the things we have coming down the line that's on our to-do list, which is about 120 lines long now, and that to-do list includes a, an ability for a company to tag a video, give a 20-second video response to it. The reviewer testimonial are, are then married to that response, and both are played back to back. And with that, we would, and, that, and so you'd have a video response and also some text that they could put along with it. In addition to that, we would offer a private communication channel where if it was an issue that businesses could reach out privately, not through email, privately to the person that posted that, and they'd be able to 
talk and try to resolve whatever that problem was. I tell my clients that if you get a negative, work with it and make it something to your advantage. Don't bury it because burying does not make it go away, but addressing it will help rectify and make it go away. So I'd say never bury the negative. Address it and correct whatever the problem may be. Yes. If I, if I understand right from the presentation, so an idea would be for business. So let's say it's a plumbing business and they go out, they do the work, they're done with it. Hey, client, would you mind doing a testimonial? Sure. Um, you know, I'm going to ask you a couple quick questions. They had the video. From there, can they upload it from their phone to your site and then maybe somebody else views it? Um, and my, my, my question is kind of like, you just don't want them to post it right away because maybe it doesn't look good. Maybe that's for whatever reason. I mean, once a video hits the net, it's there for good. So is the safeguard that the employee uploads it, um, then a manager or somebody in the office looks at it and approves it, and then it goes out to your 57 channels? Exactly. Okay. And I know it's hard to see on this small screen, but this is the record screen of the app. And the record screen of the app has a video space, an area where you can view, and it's front or rear. And then it has what we call a script area here, so that the importance about video is to get volume of content on specific topics and stay targeted so that you keep pushing that out on that topic. And the way to control that when you have multiple individuals out going to homes every day is to give them a focused script on what they need to ask for. And part of that always should be mention the name of the plumbing technician, air conditioning technician that was out there to bring your company to more of that individual human level rather than just a broad company name. And so you ask them to focus in, say on, let's say it was a bathroom remodel for the plumber. And so you say, tell us, you, they see it for the first time finished. Get that reaction on video, have them mention how pleased they are with it, and have them mention that Bob, who was out there and did all this work, was such a fantastic representative for the company. And again, you want to always bring it down to the individual because that's where you're going to start to connect. The marvelous thing about video and that's why the individuals are starting to use our platform for brief 20, 30 second infomercials to push out is because it breaks down that traditional barrier of the no like and trust. All of a sudden, someone sees you in a video three, four, five times on the internet, they begin to think they somehow know you. And if you have a nice demeanor about yourself, they like you. So maybe when you finally get in front of them, the only barrier you have to overcome is to make sure they feel they can trust you. And hopefully you've been pushing out enough positive content from your clients that maybe even that barrier is somewhat come down. And so that's where the power of video comes in. You can't do that in text. It just doesn't happen. You can't collect the animated, pleasant nature of a person, their voice, or anything else. That's where video really shines. I'm going to put you into a, a potentially a good spot. Uh, but before I do that, I'm looking at all this and I'm seeing a couple of things. It's kind of like T-Tunes for business, you know, testimonial, you know, T-Tube for business kind of thing. Uh, and it's a matter of how you're going to be able to give this in 30 seconds and, and, just, and explain what you're saying. But the big question, probably in the minds of many people here that could be advocates or potential ambassadors for you is how much? How much? How much? Is there, a, is there a revenue stream available to somebody that sends you lots of revenue? <laughs> okay. Those well, are the two questions I would From the see. standpoint of resellers, okay. A reseller, yes, we do have a generous revenue structure for our resellers. And that's a two-fold structure that, that actually comes into place. Um, obviously, we have a retail price. The retail price on our starter package is $197 a month. And for our team builder package, it's $247 a month. The first one comes with five users of the app and 25 download or uploads a month. And the team builder comes with 25 users of, the, of our app and 75 video uploads a month. Unlimited video storage, no matter who they are. Um, 
then what happens with our resellers, they go out and resell it, they sell it at that price for the first five clients that they bring on board, they're only billed at one thirty seven a month. So they have a sixty dollar cushion in there already. Plus they charge the client to manage the product. And that depending on the client can range anywhere from fifty a month to several hundred dollars a month. So they have a new revenue stream for managing the platform. Uh, the other um, would be now once they go to the six client that goes from 137 a month they get billed for that down to 117 and there are a couple other tiered steps involved so there's definitely an incentive built into the platform for resellers and plus there are, a lot of them are already doing what we've done but we've automated the process to where in reality we've taken a lot of work off of other areas that they're already doing and automated the process for them and so they're saving in that fashion too so there are multiple incentives uh, for adopting the platform. Okay, was there any other? And, and there are add-on services. We're getting ready to add tech servicing onto this. We're getting, to, you can purchase additional video uploads every month, and they're a one-time purchase that you don't have to go into recurring, but they are available. Yes, I've got two questions. One, do you have an affiliate system rather than resellers? We do. You do, okay. And on the affiliate system, uh, the affiliate has nothing that they're responsible for. A, a, a reseller is responsible for onboarding the client, which is quite extensive, but they're getting that recurring payment every month. An affiliate gets a one-time payment of $75% uh, 75 of signing up the customer. So they sign up a customer for um, $200, they're going to get $150. Okay, and the other side is... But they do nothing except sign them up and get them going on the credit card processing. And you were talking about using these for infomercials. How are you going to obtain the releases and able to do that? The releases for... From the people who are on screen and you're going to use them no, the, in a commercial. The, the, the infomercials are done strictly by our subscriber, not by their customers. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, it's not to include anything with regard to their customers. It's strictly them. Have an attorney pushing out infomercials on how and how to better select the type of is a business attorney the the type of business to choose to organize under uh, have a CPA pushing out uh, um, weekly tips on shortcuts for QuickBooks things like that okay so how are you marketing this I actually have two questions, and I'll just do them one at a time. How are you marketing this? Okay. The marketing is coming from, uh, at this particular moment, we are presenting and going to a number of different cities, speaking to different groups, and this happens to be another one of those methods of doing that, and reaching out to individual clients. We do have an advisory board that is extremely well connected to the Tampa Bay area where we're based out of. And with those, um, they are giving a lot of very nice, warm introductions and uh, to a number of businesses in that area. Our biggest way of marketing, 85, 90% of the way we market, is through our resellers. And it's signing up those resellers. We have both an extensive onboarding process for them also, where we onboard them uh, and we educate them as to the platform and how to effectively onboard new subscribing clients for us. So they take on that responsibility. That is really how this really has the opportunity to grow because one reseller could open the door to 15, 20 different clients, that one contact. We have one particular reseller in Tampa that has made the decision that he is including this on every single client's platform from this time out, and he's gradually implementing it on other. We just got back from Jacksonville and St. Augustine where we implemented it on two of his clients up there, uh, an AC company and a uh, high-end home builder. And so we've started with that, and we picked up also a reseller that is a traditional marketing company, again, looking for that first step into the digital world. How big is your team? Because I just heard you say something. I was like, oh my God, you must be like driving all over the state. So are yeah. you looking? We, we, yeah. So we, do you we have a team that, that... We have a that, very small team. Uh, Administrative-wise, it's just my wife and myself. And then we have our two um, 
We have our CTO, Charles Braden, uh, and we have Bobby Dixon, who is our hardware, and also our HTML and uh, uh, PHP um, coder, and so he does a lot of user interface work for us. And so we have those individuals, very small team. As far as reaching out beyond what we do, um, our marketing, we use an outside marketing team uh, that's very effective for us and is making some great strides for us. But we, it, we tried in-house, it just didn't work. But our, all of our engineering is in-house. That's fine. How are you doing, Steve? Fantastic. <laughs> My name is Brandon. Um, I, I'm, this might have been answered in some other way, but a couple of things I kind of didn't understand. But uh, for instance, I, um, through Yelp Biz, you can see obviously how many people are hitting your, your website and whether or not you have a lot of traffic or not. What stops me from <clears throat> just doing what you're doing, but just on YouTube? So it's very easy to upload onto YouTube. If I want to do um, a customer review, I can do that, upload it to YouTube. If it's, if it's, if it's good, like right then and there from my car, um, and and there's more traffic obviously on YouTube than you have on uh, on your website com comparatively um, on your platform. So what's what stops me from just doing that for free rather than you, know, this you can do that and you can go through all the extra work involved in that. Think about this: you have an air conditioning company or a plumbing company or wh whoever it is. They have 10, 20 vehicles out on the road. They're making anywhere maybe 40 calls, 50 calls a day and they're collecting that many videos. Now those videos have to go somewhere. So they come back, someone has to download those videos off of here, then they have to either view them or upload them to YouTube, but someone has to do that download upload process. Now when you go to share, you have to, there, it, there is nothing, no mechanism within YouTube to get that automatic rotation, that placement, there is no API. We offer both a JavaScript and a PHP API. Uh, to get these onto your website in an automatic rotation fashion. So it, it's a, a big time saver in that sense. Every video that's uploaded to our site by anyone on your team or by anyone in the public, it's uploaded and it's labeled tagged privately. Until you as a business owner go in there and view it and decide if you want to use it, and at that point you change it from uh, private to public, and then all the share elements come into play for you. And so it gives you a great deal of flexibility, and I dare say you could not go in and manage 15, 20 videos a day and do everything you want on YouTube in 10, 15 minutes, but you can on our platform. Because with a couple of clicks, it'll take that thumbnail, everything, and place it onto Facebook, um, uh, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, and you'll get all of that out there. So it's, it's a process. And, you know, or you can spend several hours a day versus 15, 20 minutes. That's where the time, and, and we all know how valuable our time is. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay, so we'd like to say thank you, but we didn't ask our last most important question, Steve. What is it that we can do for you right now? And also, what are the hashtags you would like us to use to help trend you? Hashtags. The best hashtags you can use for us are reputation management, brand management, um, what's that? Uh, yeah, video testimonials and video reviews. Those would be uh, the four ideal ones. As far as how you can help us, two ways. Uh, the first way is uh, a nice referral to one of those digital agencies that we talked about. Or if you know a business that has a substantial sales force that could benefit from something like this, then we would love that introduction. Um, the other thing that would help us is that um, we are a C Corp and we actively are raising money for our platform. Right now, all the money that we will raise will go to marketing and additional support staff for our platform because we do have a very aggressive marketing plan in place uh, and it would surely help to have those additional funds coming in. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So um, we're going to take a real quick break because we're going to switch over. Um, so if you'd like to go get coffee, you can do that. Just come back in like two minutes because we're going to bring Rolando up and he's going to talk about split, space split. Yes, thank you.
and he is with Space Split. And so um, remember, if you're out in the audience, we want to make sure that you hold that mic right next to your mouth so you know people can hear the question. So it's live streaming really well. We'd like to say hi to Canvas. And Rolando comes from Canvas and Starter Studios, so really big applause for that. Thank you, Melissa, for sending him over. Um, the other thing is, again, we want to say thanks again to Barney's, to Rollins for giving us the space, to Barney's for giving us the coffee, to all of the organizers and the volunteers today. Thank you so very much. So, you're up. Awesome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rolando Galliana, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Spacebook. And I'm really, really excited about what you're going to see right now on these uh, next coming slides. Because this, on this stage, this is the very first time we're going to introduce to you a revolutionary new product that uh, is first to market. And uh, our team of six rebels have been working hard, uh, coding, developing, designing, uh, what you're going to find out now. Um, but before we go into that, I want to share a little quick story and the way this came to be was I had a friend who's now uh, one of the co-founders of Space Split who was moving from Miami to Orlando. And he had tons of stuff to store. <laughs> he was dividing it up. And he asked if I could store some of his items. So sure, I said, I'll, I'll store it, no problem. That's what friends do, right? And so. It was there for a month. One month became two months. Two months became three months. And around month four, I finally got to him. I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to start charging you for this. <laughs> and so this is the problem that Space Split is looking to solve. Clutter sucks. That's a fact. And as you can see, uh, once, once this happened, once we realized that there is a problem. What we decided to do was hit the street and start talking to people. Find out why, what, you know, what is a solution to this problem. We all are very aware of the self-storage industry. We all know and we've had that experience, that cold, isolated, prison-like experience of storing our things in a public storage facility. And um, so we started to realize that the, the system could use some tweaking. It could use a little modern day technology. Um, and so, we could advance to the next slide. These were the, these, this was the feedback that we got as we started talking to people. Just random people on the street. First thing they said was, the business model is outdated. Well, that was our assumption. But, uh, but it was validated by them. Uh, but definitely, they were paying too much. Heard it time and time again. And that they felt they were being underserved. And so, how did we solve that problem? So if you could advance to the next slide. We decided to come up with space split. Storage starting at a dollar. Um, if you could advance to the next slide. Space split is a web and mobile platform for space sharing, connecting people who have space, we call those our hosts, and would like to make some extra money with people who are in need of space, guests to store their valuables. Let me put it simple. We are the Airbnb of self-storage. Next slide, please. So, many of you are very aware. On every corner, there is what? A storage facility, right? 40 years, it's been the fastest growing real estate, uh, commercial real estate industry for the past 40 years. Has not slowed down. So there's market validation. 52,500 facilities across the United States. And this is taken directly from the Self Storage Association's very own um, research and studies that they've conducted. We can advance to the next slide. Some additional facts. Okay, so in revenue, the self storage, bin, the, the self -storage industry is generating $27.2 billion. Let me repeat, billion dollars <laughs> in revenue. One out of 10 people have had an experience with the storage facility, or are currently actively storing. And 
in addition to this, we went, we dug, we dug a little deeper, did a, a Google AdWords search just on the term self-storage, and there is 1.4 million people doing that search monthly. That doesn't include storage near me. That doesn't include storage. That doesn't include any of those other key ter keywords. Just self-storage. It's a huge market validation. Huge market validation. And in addition to that, this is something that what we will capitalize on is the fact that 54.2 of those searches are generated from mobile devices. We can advance to the next slide. So how is it that, uh, that we're going to make money right, as a company? Um, how are we going to provide this service to our customers? Well, very simple process and very affordable process. We are going to charge a 15% commission per transaction. It's, it's as easy as it gets. Now, there are some premium features to our hosts who want to become power hosts that are taking their business seriously. And for that, there is a monthly premium membership of $10 a month. There's some added features that you could see listed there. Um, featured listing, direct access to Spacebits, a moving and hosting line with expert advice. Uh, these are some additional features with our premium um, host platform. So how are we going to get market adoption? How are we going to get the word out? Well, quite simply, uh, we have several events, tech events happening throughout the year. We're going to target as many uh, tech events uh, there is one happening in October next month in New York. Um, our team, we're going to head over there and we're going to pitch our idea into our, our, our company into a, a, a pitch contest to get national exposure. Um, of course, the Orlando community is going to be huge and central to our success. We are in Starter Studio. They are a key partner for us right now. Uh, and um, hosts are going to be our strategic partners. And uh, of course, marketing. Marketing is going to be huge for us, internet and inbound marketing. You can advance. This is, some of, this is kind of the, 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 the dynamic right now of what's happening as far as in this industry. Uh, there are some competitors in this space. Um, there is another peer-to-peer -peer storage facility out of Silicon Valley, but our model is completely different than theirs, and, uh, and that's where we have a key advantage, if you could uh, advance. And this is our competitive advantage. We will create a subculture that promotes service and community. Hosts will make money through maximizing their available space, and guests will save money by only paying on a per item basis, with rates starting as low as a buck a box. Furthermore, we will establish member trust by offering the following, verified IDs, insurance protection, secure cashless payment processing, our space split guarantee, printable seals, user reviews, and best in class customer support. And of course, uh, User experience and user interface is core at the brand of Spaceboy. That's the next slide. So this is just some mock-ups of, of the experience, as you can see. Gorgeous design, simple. That's the key, simple. We'll go to the next slide. And this is the team of coding wizards. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm blessed that, that I work with, with a great team, and they're working hard. Uh, every day to ensure that we get this product out to market as quickly and as fast as possible. Next slide. And that's it. You can reach out to us um, through Twitter, Facebook, uh, and uh, our site as of this morning is up, and we are accepting hosts. So you can go in and you can, you can put an initial interest as a host on our site. Thank you. Love the idea, by the way. <laughs> a couple initial problems. So, so you said this is the first time you guys presented this, and t today is the first day your site is up, right? That is correct. Okay. Have you tested this yet? So we you have no hosts, no nothing. Correct. The, our initial hosts will be our beta testers. Oh, okay. So, okay. so we, we have not tested the product. The product is actually not available for use. Let me just get that clear. It's, it's, it's under development. But... Our go-to market strategy is to partner with hosts, and part of that process is onboard them and, and, and really get them to become our, our key advocates in this, in this business. Okay, so my, my question is the problem of, I wanna store my stuff at somebody else's house because it's cheaper or, or property or whatever, wherever I'm storing it. The reason why I, I particularly would store it at U-Store or U-Haul or um, Noah's Ark or wherever, 
is because it's locked up, it's safe, nobody's going to take it, nobody's going to steal it. It's a big company, so they can afford liability insurance for that. But I'm storing it at, at like, Homeboy's, you know, basement or something, you know. So w w what happens if my stuff gets damaged? What happens if it's stolen? What happens if their house burns down and, and now my stuff was there? You know, does that kind of make sense? So what's, what's, your, what's your game plan on, on conquering it? So absolutely. We strongly encourage, first and foremost, that on the host and on the guest side, um, that you reach out and, uh, to your renter's policy, your homeowner's policy, one. Two. We're in talks with an insurance company on an insurance, an umbrella policy to cover and protect under those circumstances. So, so to address your question. Love the Airbnb concept applied to storage, having moved across the world many times. <laughs> um, awesome thinking. And have left my stuff at somebody's house for maybe a year or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, that aside, Let's say that I am a prepper, and amongst all the things that I want to store are, I don't know, 40 boxes of ammunition. <laughs> but you don't know what's in those containers that I'm putting in your house. Are you guys prepared to cover those types of things? I know that you have said you're looking into those insurance things. Have you written disclaimers into your you uh, lose your, you know, where are you doing the things you can to try to prevent that? Absolutely. We actually do have a prohibited list of items. So definitely ammunition, anything like that. <laughs> um, we also even would discourage collectibles, anything of a value of $10,000 or more. Definitely not. Um, and, and that's really the, the, um, the key thing is it is, there is it is an element of trust. Um, however, hosts will be able to see what is the contents is in the box, um, and if if they choose to, uh, that's more of something arranged between host and guest, because there is going to be a communication platform on the back end. Uh, once once they uh, a guest books a, or selects a host to, to to host their their items, then of course uh, that the communication uh, process begins. Okay, and the follow up with that. And I want to make sure I understand this correctly. I have a spare room in my house. And it's not doing anything. You know, it's an office, but I'm never in there. And uh, so I can rent that out to as many people as I can stuff stuff in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to maximize whatever nook and cranny you have, it be it an attic, a basement. And those things are going to be on your profile you're going to indicate what type of space. There's going to be images of the type of space. So the person, uh, more than likely, if it's an attic space, it's something that, that you know, weather doesn't really impact. Um, but it, your outdoor shed, your garage, any space. Now, um, the slides don't portray this, but parking space, RV parking, boat parking, you have available space you can rent. Hi, good morning. Over here. Hi, hi, hi. So, um, two questions. One is, who makes the storage decision in the family? A man or a woman? In, in terms of what the, the, yeah. the demographic is? Yeah, I'm is? moving. See, I think I know the answer, but I'm actually setting him up. So, just so you know. I know, I know, but he has to say it. So, um, yeah, so, I, you know, my husband and I are moving, right? And I'm clear, wherever we're going, it's not going to be big enough to hold all my stuff. Who well, makes that storage decision, a man or a woman? I would hope, and <laughs> it's mutually decided, but from <laughs> between... You must be a millennial, <laughs> However, sorry. <laughs> from a marketing standpoint, the woman. <laughs> yeah, so, so t that was to my point. So I noticed a lack of women on your team, right? If your target audience is women, where are you going to find that input of the decision makers such that your marketing and your message speaks to us? Absolutely. Did it speak to you so far? Just curious. <laughs> now, um, every step along the way, 
And this is, this is something that actually being in the accelerator program at Starter Studio has been phenomenal about, is getting validation. Customer feedback, customer validation. So to answer that question, we are a team of six men, which won't remain that way once we get funding and we can employ it. <laughs> however, however the, the key thing is that, uh, yes, every step along the way, we're getting validation, we're getting feedback. And until we get that, we proceed and move forward. Hi. Um, so I just have one question, really. Um, even if you got the like insurance and everything to ensure that you know people's stuff is safe, what about when it comes to like retrieving their items, like at a particular time? Let's say I have a guitar in storage and I want to play it. That person's not home, or he's on a date night at his house. Is there any sort of like set policy where um, you can get it, or is it all based on the communication between the uh, storage and the uh, store? So. Um in the, on the, on, in the process of checking out, you're looking at the, the profile. You, the, the, one of the final screens is you look at the profile, the host profile. The host profile has a description. And, they, and in the description, it's going to outline the access, the times that are available. We're going to encourage for a selling point that hosts have some flexibility with that. You know, because if, in the end, it's their business, right? They want their business to succeed. So what they would need to do is list, let's just say Sunday from nine to five is when the space is accessible. That would, so the person would select that specifically and exclusively. If not, they would swipe to the left, pick the next host that has more available, you know, more, more flexibility, more available time. But yes, on the back end, um, the, the communication will be very central too if, if it's off hours. Person might say, hey, you know, um, I need to access it pretty uh, urgently, can, can, can I go in Tuesday night, or Tuesday afternoon? And if the host uh, is there and is comfortable with that, then they can make that arrangement outside of what they've put on their profile. Um, how are you vetting the customer and the host? And the reason why I say this, this would be a great space for drug dealers to stash their stash. <laughs> to, to be that direct, be um, because like, I have extra warehouse space, so this would be a great thing for us. But my concern is that how do I know the customer is legit? And you, could, you say we could open the boxes and things like that and look inside, but if someone's not ethical... So, excellent question. Um, we do ID verification. So if there is a criminal history, if there is anything um, on that person, guest or host, they will not be allowed on our platform, one. Two, their customer reviews on the host and the guest site, much like what Airbnb does. So user ratings, huge. If a person, for whatever reason, was untrustworthy, unreliable, that goes in to their uh, profile. So those are two measures to, to, to address that. Um, I think definitely we will, um, do, by doing the ID verification, we'll, 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 we'll be able to, to uh, you know, weed out a lot of that. <laughs> well, the first question I had, I think, has been answered. That has to do with uh, uh, the security of this, the insurability of this. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is the standpoint of uh, it seems like there would be some degree, uh, a pretty strong degree of IRS compliance where you have to report this income and you have to uh, reporting. What's involved with that for you as far as compliance for the IRS? We are, uh, quite frankly, we are a platform. We're a broker making a connection between a host and a guest. Uh, we will track all that, provide a 1099 to, to hosts. Okay. So they are, in essence, um, responsible for reporting their, their income taxes as, as a self-employed person. So, so. You, you assume no liability, and that's, we assume no that, liability that's in your terms, terms, conditions. And, okay. And that's it, outlined in our terms and conditions, absolutely. So our terms and conditions will outline, um, essentially, all the legalese. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, they are entrepreneurs. They are business owners. And we're providing the platform, the marketing arm, the, you know, the resources for them. 
So far, so good, man. <laughs> Keep with it. All right. So market validation, financial questions. Okay. One, I'm a host. I have a 10 by 10 space that's available. What can be my estimated revenue? Number one. Number two, I am interested in supporting split space because split. I'm sure you're heading, in, <laughs> heading into financial rounds. Um, what is your projected revenue and what is your time frame to get to profitability? Absolutely. So we've run some models. Okay. And um, to address the first question, how much can a host earn? Okay. Now the first thing is, probably the best way to answer this is just think of what it's in it for the host, okay? You have your car parked in your garage, right? You have a two, per, you have a two car garage. Why not pull the vehicle out, park it in the driveway, and become, that space now becomes available to, to rent, right? Based on the models that, we, that, that we've calculated, they're not precise and exact, but that will pay a car payment on that vehicle. So I'm not going to give exact numbers, but we're looking between $150, $200 for that space. So that's the value prop right there, is that you can make a car payment with that extra space that you have. You could you know, pay your phone bill. You can, that's, that's, that's the better way of answering it. What's in it for the host? So now the second part is, on the, on the revenue, uh, we, we are actually in, in the process of acquiring funding. So we are, we are in that process. I just want to make that known. Um, we run some models. Our target run rate right now is $2 million. Okay, so we're looking to, at the $2 million is our target run rate. Um, profitable after the second year. So that's uh, probably, probably prior to that, but uh, that's, that's uh, ballpark. Okay, I'll give you two really quick extreme uh, things that I see on two different ends from an income source standpoint. One is I'm a 16-year-old kid and said, man, I can go to U-Haul and get myself a whole place for a buck for the first month, 39 bucks for each month after. How many boxes can I fit in there? Shoo! <laughs> That's one extreme. The other extreme is I'm actually the self-storage facility and goes, what am I doing wasting my time with these turkeys? <laughs> a buck a box. That's a lot of money for a, a, an eight by ten. That's twelve well, foot high. Uh, the the buck a box, keep in mind, is a small box. We're not talking about. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah correct. So so um, and then the the, the um, other items have different price points. So you have a bicycle that needs to be stored, different price point. You have a washer that needs to be stored. It's a different price point. That's what I was trying to pull out of you because yeah. I'm going, bucket box, th this isn't a pricing schedule. So. Yeah, yeah, no, it's on a per item basis. And that's our key differentiator. We're not trying to compete on the square foot space against U-Haul public storage. We can't compete in that space. Because, of course, that's, you know, that's talking about a whole room being stored, right? Um, we're talking on a per item basis. Person has a few boxes for Christmas that they only touch once a year and they need access once a year, store those items at a buck a box. And, and, and then it could be larger items. Some people will have larger items and so it changes the dynamic of what the price will be. Now, small box is a buck a box and incrementally gets increases from there. Hey, um, all right, so I just kind of had like two quick little questions. Well, one, are you, you're not providing the boxes, correct? No. All right, so you have like what you consider the box that you charge a buck for, like the dimensions right. and everything? Yeah. Okay. And then now what if someone all of a sudden needs to move or, you know, and you have to get all your stuff out and what if you can't do that? What if you're out of town or you're, you know, whatever the case is, you're just not available, you don't have the means to do it, what happens with all your stuff? So you're saying if it's, if it's left for an extended period and... Right, like say somebody like... I, the host, yes. Say the host. Um, all of a sudden, emergency happens. They have to leave whatever place that they're living in, and your stuff is stored there. 
and they contact you and they tell you you need to you know you need to get this stuff out and say you're out of town or say you you know you uh you just don't have the means to do it you need a truck it's a washer for instance or something you know and you you can't move it what happens well we are partnering with additional companies um, to solve that problem so so if there is a need to to to, uh, to move an item um, and to also answer the other question which would come along with that what if a person doesn't pay abandons their stuff their items um, that's not the host's responsibility to, to, to try to um, uh, remove the items or do any of that. So it's all through the partnerships that we create. So we would be able to, to have a moving company grab the items in advance and we would warehouse them at, on our cost because of course that, is, that would be a, 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 a key problem if you know, we had an unhappy guest. Number one thing here is customer service, customer service, ensuring that the customer is happy. This is our last question. I'm playing devil's advocate today. Um, what happens if the stuff that is stored, stored causes damage to the host? Like they store a couch and you get bed bugs, or there's liquid and it opens up and ruins your carpet or your hardwood floors. So, so for that, that's what the insurance protection is for. So to address that, so, so it, on the host and the guest side, it, 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 it covers. That's, the details are being worked out right now, but because uh, we're in talks with an insurance company to, to work out, to iron out the details. It's such a new model. Uh, nothing like this has been done, so there's a lot to work through in that, in that space. However, um, we're working aggressively to, to address that. All right. Um, thank you for all of your great questions. In the spirit of One Million Cups, what can we do for you? Uh, first thing would be um, definitely go to spacesplit.com. Uh, if you have an interest, you can go in, and as of today, as I mentioned, you can go in and fill out our form. It's an interest form right now. Um, our, like I said, our go-to market strategy right now is definitely to, uh, to partner with hosts in the area, only in the Orlando, Florida area, um, for a beta test. Um, in addition to that, and the, and the product won't be launched until late fall. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, in addition to that, we are actively um, seeking investment capital. Um, so introductions, um, whatever uh, can be done to, to be able to open up those doors. So hashtag would be space split. And um, yeah, absolutely, storage would be, uh, I would say those two. That's all we need. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Again, we'd like to say thanks to Steve and Rolando for coming up and pitching, and we also want to say thanks again to always to our sponsors, to the Coffin Foundation, to Rollins, to Barney's, to all the organizers, and our new volunteers today. Thanks for them. Um, we also want, want to say thank you for coming, and we really encourage you to bring other guests with you because this is how we all grow and we get to hear about the latest technology that's out there. And we miss Angela and Stephanie today, so sending them smiles and love. And then lastly, we have about 30 minutes where we, if you're new, we sit and we get to network with people in the room. So take your time, make sure you always have your business cards, and thank you, we'll see you next week. <laughs>